It's been a long Pride Month and a wonderful one. We've already celebrated in many ways. The Courier Journal has helped us celebrate in several ways with some wonderful editorials. Uh, some, some of the Fairness Campaign's co-founders and a number of elected officials who have voted for fairness legislation over the years uh, joined me in the Grand Marshal contingent of this year's Kentuckiana Pride Parade. Uh, and today uh, we celebrate one day prior to the day, 20 years ago, that the Fairness Campaign was announced at the 5th March for Justice. So I want us to give a real hearty round of applause to the people who announced that on June 29, 1991. Um, so uh, tonight's panel uh, is, as I said, the beginning of a three-part series uh, in which we will address various points of the Fairness Campaign's history. And tonight's panel's intent is for us to reminisce a bit, uh, those of you who were there, and for those of us who weren't, to sneak in on your reminiscing of these early memories uh, that, that many of us did not get to experience. So. Um, the panel is going to be led by University of Louisville <laughs> Associate uh, Professor Dr. Kate Fossil of Women and Gender Studies and the Director of the Ann Brayton Institute for Social Justice Research. Huge round of applause for Dr. Kate Fossil. So in just a moment, Kate will guide you all through this, uh, through this uh, period in history, and I've asked her um, to, to gently uh, set up some bumpers to keep us uh, moving forward, but really uh, each panel member is going to sort of address their coming in moment, if you will. So uh, the earliest memories of how they came into the Fairness Campaign or became involved in this movement and whatever that looks like to them. And I'm sure we'll bring up some broader topics. We'll have a little bit of time for question and answer at the end. And my hope is that we don't cover everything tonight, that you are, I know that we won't cover everything tonight, that you are left uh, with some lingering desire to hear more. The second panel is listed on your program. If you haven't picked one up, they're available out on the front table. It's a red uh, bifold pamphlet. The second history panel will be during the University of Louisville Pride Week. It's Wednesday, October the 5th at 6 p.m. in the Chow Auditorium in the basement of the Ekstrom Library. And uh, that panel will uh, focus pretty heavily on the Fairness Campaign's history of dismantling racism. And then the final in this series uh, will be in November during the Transgender Week of Awareness. And that panel is intended to focus on the importance of the inclusion of the transgender community in Louisville's original fairness ordinance that was passed in 1999. The last thing that I will do before I run away is a marketing pitch to buy your fairness campaign t-shirts before you leave. They're available in purple, gray, and black, and they say fairness. Ooh, for 20 years. Oh. And they are they're free with a $20 donation. <laughs> All right. I will shut up now and I will turn it over to once again a round of applause for Dr. Kate Fossil. provide the introductions to the panelists tonight, which I'm honored to do. And first of all, I'd like to say that, you know, Chris was quite, quite a um, you know, master of ceremonies there and a cheerleader, but if there's anything I don't say about these panelists, it's not due to lack of respect and admiration. It's just in the interest of time. So I hope all of these will come out in terms of uh, the profound contributions of each, of each of the people up here and then honestly of many of you in this room who um, are not on the panel but could easily be. So we want it to be a real conversation. Uh, Chris sort of, uh, before I start with the introductions, two things. Um, 
One is, did you say about the cell phones? Please turn off your cell phones. If you have. Okay, so no cell phones, please, no ringers. But then the other thing is, um, Chris, who, as you know, has a background in theater, has got us going <laughs> on a kind of a process where, um, it's got us going on a kind of process, and the way this is going to work is that each of our um, panelists will begin with a sort of three or four minute, um, you know, just uh, personal statement about their, their coming in story, as, as Chris called it. I like that. Not coming out, but we're going to come in today. So, um, so I'll introduce them in the way that uh, we thought it might be good for people in the order in which people are going to speak. But it's also the case that um, he asked me to like, which is awkward, frankly, to interrupt these opening statements or at least to follow up on each opening statement if there was sort of a big theme or a conversation piece that you know, needed to be explored so that they would, that wouldn't have to wait like three presenters later, you know what I mean? So that's not a, um, a format I've used before, but I'm going to try it because again, our, you know, our, our, the, the background of performance, I think, is really important. <laughs> so that having been said, I would like to begin the introductions of the panel. I'm going to start by introducing our um, <coughs> First speaker will be Pam and Michael tonight. And Pam, who many of you know, is a longtime uh, feminist, anti racist, and queer rights leader and organizer across the South, really. We're lucky to claim her here in Louisville. Um, she was an instrumental figure in the, um, what do I want to say, coming in, the forces of coming in that led to their being a fairness campaign. And her background is, is really diverse here in town, so I, I'm going to sort of not go into that because there's a lot to go into. I could say that she grew up on a family tobacco farm a few miles, 20, 30, 40 miles east. 50 miles <laughs> east. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, came here as a young woman and was with us for many years. And now today, she's the director of the Highlander Center down in and outside Knoxville, Tennessee, and does some great intersectional work using some of the experiences she got here. So that that I'm going to go ahead and do all the introductions now. Okay, so we can just go straight to the next person. After Pam, we'll hear from Jane. Oh, I'm oh yes, I'm sorry. Yes. And after Pam, we'll hear from Jane Hope, who's been uh, an instrumental figure um, also in the coming in process that led to the fairness campaign, so the pre-fairness, um, through her work with um, PFLAG and as the mother of three uh, and the grandmother of several now. Um, five. Uh, you know, her, her oldest son is gay, and I think in terms of dealing with that is how she kind of came into the work. And now her oldest son uh, has uh, his two children uh, with a lesbian couple and lives in Minneapolis. So that's all she wanted me to say in the way that <laughs> And then next, we're going to hear from Miss Maddie Jones, who's one of my heroines at, here in this city. And Maddie Jones has a very long history in activism, as all of you know, I'm sure. She's been active in the African American freedom struggle since the 60s, or even before that, perhaps. She's a longtime leader in the Kentucky Alliance against racist and political repression. She's um, she, for a time, worked for the Fellowship of Reconciliation. Uh, more recently, she's been with the Justice Resource Center. And her uh, coming in story, I think we'll hear it, but it has a lot to do with uh, coming out as an ally, I think. 
in, in a very important and early moment. So let's have a round of applause. Next, we'll hear from Eric Graninger, who is an attorney uh, with the, um, oh, used to be with the Presbyterian. Right, now with the Jefferson County Attorney's Office. I'm sorry, Jefferson County Attorney's Office couldn't read my own writing. Um, he's been uh, uh, involved with Fairness from the first, and he's uh, also been partner to his current partner, Jeff, for more than 25 years, which is a big accomplishment. And, um, and an interesting thing about Eric's work with the... the um, you know, in the law as the, with the county attorney's office has to do with he actually enforces these laws that we work so hard to pass. Um, thank you. And then finally we're going to hear from uh, another hero of mine, Sherry Bryant Hamilton, right here to my right who is one of our most outstanding councilwomen, and she's held that post since 2000, but her work with fairness and against discrimination far predates that. In fact, she's the daughter of an amazing, amazing leading activist here from the civil rights years, Ruth Bryant. Um, and she was the... Um, she was the assistant to uh, Rhonda Richardson, who was the very early um, alder woman who was out front on fairness. And so Sherry was really behind the scenes with that. And then when the, or that was in 1991, and then when the ordinance moved forward, by that time, she was clerk of the Board of Aldermen. So today, she's going to give us some of that backstory that she couldn't give us then. <laughs> I think I'll uh, adjourn to Pam's coming in story.